Ducklet Show with Google to seek technical answers for your baking questions and many of you come back to join our Baker View seminars or to download our Baker Paper original white papers. After doing all these, if you have more questions, check out our Bakerpedia help where you can hire Bakerpedia team of experts to work for you. Before I start this episode of Ask Dr. Lin, I would like to thank Chopin Technologies for sponsoring this episode. The Chopin Technologies Alveo Do Tenacity, Extensibility, Elasticity, and Baking Strength. It is an international and standardized reference that realizes the benefits from steady innovation for almost a century, making the test even more precise and easy to use. The Alveograph is a valuable tool for industrial bakers, allowing them to test new formulations, control additives, and monitor conformity of the flowers received. For more information on the Alveograph, visit www.chopin.fr. It's high protein content, about 12 to 14 percent, that is suited for most yeasted bread. Most bread flour is from hard red or hard white wheat. On this page, you will find more information on bread flour and how aging it provides a better quality flour for you. This flour is hard and soft wheats and it is popular because it is so versatile. It can be used in pizza dough formulas to muffins. Therefore, it's a great flour to have on hand at any bakery. So can you substitute all-purpose flour with bread flour? I would highly advise against this. You may get away with it with small 10 pound dough batches, but once you're at the industrial scale, this substitution will wreak havoc on your mixer, your sheeter, your depositor, and your process as a whole. So it's not worth saving that money. As for the LVO graph, you will see an increase in elasticity index around 60 to 65 due to the increase in protein strength as compared to an all-purpose flour, which is around 40 to 45 on LVO graph. Low as 0.4 percent are still sought after to make soft. These days, the artisan bread trend has pushed that ash content to over 0.6 percent. Why? Because you can get away with an off-color low for artisan breads. That's why. To learn more about what contributes to the ash content, go to this page. In milling, as you grind closer and closer to the bran, or if you choose to have high extraction flour, your ash content is going to increase. So as ash comes from the valuable minerals in the bran, that is going to increase as well. Yes. As it is, I would love to see the industry move towards higher ash flours because this would mean that the flour has more nutrients. What would this do to the quality of the flour? Well, if you go from 0.55 to about 0.65%, 
about a percentage higher, you may see a slight difference in color and maybe an increase in absorption. You will also see an increase in your protein quantity, but that doesn't necessarily mean your flour quality would increase. Baking quality of higher ash content flour is worse than content flour and can cause lower volume products. Depending on what process or facility you have, if you're a smaller scale bakery, you may be able to navigate this by giving it more fermentation time to improve the gluten hydration and functionality. However, if you're an industrial bakery, the limitation of your process may not cater to increased fermentation time. You might need more vital wheat gluten or dough conditioners like SSL and datum to prevent the detrimental effect on volume. In terms of the alveograph, using constant hydration, the dough will look underhydrated, resulting in a higher tenacity and a lower extensibility. The effect of high ash on flower quality can be seen clearly on the alveograph. and records its properties before it bursts and deflates. It is used to access the baking performance of flour in the production of bread, noodles, tortillas, and so on. To learn more about and bursting it shows values that indicates elasticity, strength, tenacity and extensibility. Not only is it a really effective tool to measure flour quality, it is also an official AACC, ICC, and ISO method as well. Here's my friend. Adapted over the same amount of water, whereas situation the water addition is um, adapted to the flower potential. So the, the question is, because of that, does that make um, um, a limitation for the alveograph? Uh, and here the question is clearly no. We can use the alveograph on any kind of flowers, and, and even we can use it on durum wheat with the constant hydration test. And for this we have three evidences. The first one is that we have thousands of users uh, which are using the alveograph for more than 100 years. So they can't be wrong if they are using that in their routine, if they are using that for blending the wheat, blending the flowers, um, looking at additive enzymes effect. Even publications are done on this alveograph. So it means that we can use this adapted hydration protocol for any kind of then the second thing is that constant hydration is not representative of bakery. What is representative? Because what is good for a baker uh, doing bread is not good for someone doing shabbat or someone doing noodle. The water absorption is not the same. So even if we adapt the water absorption, we are going to have a consensus on the level of, of hydration, which will be good maybe for some users but not necessarily good for other ones. So even that is not a definitive solution. And the third point is that the adapted hydration protocol of the alveograph exists since more than 20 years. So it's here, it's available, you can use it. And the good news is that this protocol is now a standardized method from the ICC with the number 188. 
So the conclusion of that is that either you want to use it at constant hydration or adapted hydration, there is absolutely no real reason to limit alveoguar to certain type of it. Okay, let's face the reality. And for that, we have two things to look at. The first one should be to look at international standards. And then in the international standard, you have precision data. So you can refer to that. And the second thing is to look at proficiency testing schemes like the BPR or AACC check sample. If you look at this circuit, you will have an idea of what is the variation when testing the same sample in different labs. If you look at that and if you refer to standard method, you will see that the alveograph reproducibility is between 4 to 10 percent depending on the parameters. Now, if you compare that with other tools, which are famous to find 25 to 35 percent, which means that even with the fact of having manipulation and oiling, the alveograph is way more precise than other competitive tools. The second thing is that the alveograph method is not complicated, really. That's something you will learn in one day, no more. We have a lot of things. First of all, when we install a machine, we do a training. Then we have videos for explaining to people what to do, not to do. And yeah, we have to think that this is an analytical tool. So of course we need to treat it with care. But when we do that, you can have very precise results very rapidly. It's not like piloting a Boeing. It's very simple and you can learn it very easily and then a precise reason. The third point, very important, is the maintenance. Because over time, of course, the machine gets dirty or something happens. And we are very lucky with Chopin with that we have a very extensive network of distributors which are here to help you. So that when you see that the, re the results are out of the standard uh, values, then you can call them and they will fix it and even send you check sample to make sure that the device has a problem and based on that, they will adjust and calibrate it accordingly. And that's why, at the end of the day, the alveograph is a precise method. We care from device from the first is the same performance and the same result as existing devices because we can't forget all the customers we have using them and we do not want to create any confusion in the market so that was a clear objective from the beginning of developing this new tool the second reason is that the calibration and the validation of all the devices we are doing in our labs like here before sending unit to, to the users are still the same. And basically, they are based on external reference material, which means flowers with known data that we are testing here. And this flower, they are uh, evaluated by all kinds of devices. So that ensures a continuity from kind of, of units. So development, calibration and validation. Uh, and all of that ensures to have the same result. Third thing, we are of course monitoring this impact and we are looking at proficiency testing schemes, different sources, to make sure that the new Alveo Lab and the Alveo PC and all the system are all giving the same results. So we are monitoring that very regularly and we can make sure and we have evidence that this unit gives the exact same result as the other one. And of course, then we need to update the standard because this is not yet described in, in, in some standard and this is already in process at ICC level, at ISO level. We hope to have a discussion very soon with AACC level so that even the alveolar will be also part of the standard because the results are the same. It's just a matter of adapting the standard to this new tool. So yes, the alveolar is giving exactly the same reason as the previous version.
possible. Um, let's take some example of that. The first one is we can measure dura width on that, which is another method, but we can perfectly do that with an alveograph or an alveolar. We have been recently working very hard in developing a wall width flower. That was not achievable on the previous version, but thanks to all the adjustment possibilities of the alveolar, we are now in position to, very soon, uh, this year, bring to the market a solution for wall width analysis. But that's not all. Sometimes we are facing a um, um, strange question or, or requirement, and we had the opportunity to make a test on the Alveo PC on mozzarella cheese which is totally out of the scope of the flower. Uh, we have evidences uh, on the past that uh, it has been applied on chewing gum. And just for the fun, we also had a moment where we have been also inflating condoms in the alveolar. So everything that can keep gas can be tested on the alveolar graph. Last but not least, if you look at the alveolar, this, if you compare it with previous version, it has a lot of possibilities to be adjusted in terms of temperatures, of time, mixing, uh, blowing um, strengths, all can be adjusted. And because of that, that's an excellent candidate to develop new applications with new stuff. So no, the alveograph is not only limited to white flower, it is limited to something that will make a bubble and that's the only limit it has. Well, thank you, Arnaud. That was a wealth of knowledge on the alveograph and how it can be used for your flower quality protocol. Remember, the Chopin Technologies alveograph measures the dough tenacity, extensibility, elasticity, and baking strength. It is an international and standardized reference that realizes the benefits from steady innovation for almost a century making the test even more precise and easy to use. The alveograph is a valuable tool for industrial bakers, allowing them to test new formulations, control additives, and monitor conformity of the flowers received. For more information on the alveograph, visit www.chopin.fr.